Hello and welcome to Coffee at Tosses on Demand. I'm Kamil Hirji and I'm a product architect for the Azure Workspace. Good day everyone, I'm Tara Lockton and I'm the product architect for Microsoft Modern Workplace and Security. Hi guys, my name is Senzo and I am the support team lead here at Tosses on Demand and welcome. Today guys, we'll be having a light discussion around cybersecurity and breaches that occur in numerous industries. These case studies are a way to illustrate how pivotal it is to keep your environment robust. Our first topic of discussion is a breach that occurred at NetBank in 2023. The bank confirmed it experienced a cyber attack between the 15th and 18th of March 2023. The attack on NetBank involved several threat actors retrieving approximately 41,000 cell phone numbers linked to valid South African ID numbers. No NetBank systems or client accounts were compromised as a result of this incident. However, attackers attempted to create fraudulent profiles on the NetBank Money app using valid SAID numbers. These ID numbers were already in possession of the attackers and were obtained from third-party software. Once NetBank became aware of the incident, the enrollment process was immediately shut down as a proactive measure. So guys, from this vulnerability that was exploited on the NetBank breach, how do you think, or what, what do you think the vulnerability was in this particular incident? That is a very good point, Camille. Um, I think in first and foremost, uh, weak uh, enrollment processes were, were followed there, and that was exploited on this breach on the money app. Yeah, sure. That's just um, one of the few I can I can think of. Uh, another one would be the lack of multi-factor authentication. We need to make sure there's multiple layers, not just link pass. One part, you know what I mean? Yeah, one hundred percent. And what do you think could have been done proactively, you know, to avoid this type of situation? Look, man, I mean, it's, it's quite a big company, so you would think that uh, things like regular audit checks would be done um, on their systems. The app would need to pen test that a lot, especially if you're going to be giving access to a third party, a vendor, for example, you know? So true, that Senzo. Um, with that as well, there could have been another proactive measure in terms of using Microsoft um, a Defender for Identity. Mm -hmm. This would have helped them in terms of determining exactly where potential breaches or potential threats could have been identified. Yeah. And to add more on that, uh, Sarah, with Microsoft Defender for Identity, it proactively measures and does this checks in the background and monitors for you and does it and it sends you alerts? Yes, it is a proactive uh, monitoring platform. So alerts and reports in terms of audit reports and security reports are sent in um, to, to the IT department in terms of what is potentially a threat in that environment. So, so by saying all this, you know, I, I think it's vitally important that the correct training to employees could have been done then. So what, what training do you think NetBank should have given its employees or out to the public? I mean, there are a lot of training programs um, that we can enroll or use them. We, first thing foremost is implement regular um, cybersecurity training or enroll the users in cybersecurity yes. training programs. Physical yeah, simulations yeah. goes well with that as well. It adds to your point, Senzo, because um, you get an email that might be from a company director. Mm -hmm. And to your knowledge, you should have known that, okay, a director would not just send me an email directly. There is a line of management to follow. Well, that would have helped in this case. And what you do there, it trains the users next time you know not to click on those links if there are links on those guys. So, so, so Jarrell, with Microsoft Defender, uh, for 365. How can TASIS help, you know, in terms of this training? There is com comprehensive training programs that TASIS On Demand offers, and these will help businesses in terms of stopping, or at least trying to stop any cyber threat that is found in the environment. So, so can we automate, you know, like phishing simulations? And yes, yes, we can. We just had one about last week where we have an email that was sent saying that you know that this is potentially what is occurring is this a real email or does it look phishing to you yes and what does what it uh, helps with is when you identify the users who click on those uh, suspicious links you get a report of that and then you can just specifically provide training to those so true which okay, is pretty cool so so by saying that as well what multi-layered security 
should NetBank have put in place in order to strengthen their overall security posture? First and foremost, data encryption on the third-party databases. It is quite important that they should have implemented that and securing um, no zero access to getting a data breach on a third-party app. True, that's, that's very true. Um, another thing, limit the type of access or limit your access altogether. Um, only authorized personnel um, should have access to certain, certain things. Certain data. Data. Yes. So, so what you're saying, Senzo, we should apply the principle of least privilege. Absolutely. Always assume a breach, um, allow no one. So true. So, from the nature of this breach, what lessons can be learned from the NetBank incident? And how can Tarsus on Demand assist by creating an effective response incident plan? Well, I mean, there's a lot we can learn here, but um, you know, lessons learned from the incident at NetBank include um, the importance of swift action. You know, we have to identify these things at a very, very early age. Um, it will mitigate the least amount of data that's being expected. That is so true, so you know what I mean? Um, it but, helps, uh, yeah, it not helps with, um, in terms of the stats that is going around, um, in terms of identifying when a threat is actually in your environment, yes. is 59 days. That is almost two months. That is a long time. It's a long time for somebody to just be lying dormant within an environment. And you said so that's the stats in South Africa. That's the stats. That's how long it takes. Actually, you know, 4,000 ransomware attacks occur on a daily basis. And people are not even aware of it. And 91% of these attacks mm. all start off with a simple email. Exactly. So that ties into, again, awareness training for your employees. It helps them to understand and know how phishing attacks is, is engineered. And I think it's important as well that we do regular tr uh, drills, you know. Testing of those testing applications of and testing of those security measures helps a lot with this. And as Sensor mentioned, pen testing as well. I think it should be done every quarter. Absolutely. It should be part of your strategy and uh, your auditing. So how can tasks on demand assist, you know, with pen testing and phishing, phishing implementations and overall cybersecurity testing? Well, here at Tarsus, we are all for the partner. We absolutely um, make sure that our partners are always secure. That is why we are having this discussion today, just to sort of create some sort of awareness um, on what we do and how we can come into the picture, um, develop strategies for you, um, make sure that your security posture from a Microsoft 365 point of view, as well as, as Azure, um, is secure. set those things up and then make it work for you. Yes. Okay, no, thank you so much, guys. So just before we close off, any final thoughts, Tyrell? There's never a one size fits all in terms of security. It is very pivotal to develop a strategy and a journey that works for you. And there needs to be a bit of budget set behind for implementing security measures. Absolutely. Um, I agree with that last part, the budget, you know. I think there's this misconception of IT in general and businesses that let's not spend too much, on so much money on IT. It's okay. not a revenue generating a service. But when it comes to security, you are really going to have a look at that. Uh, yes. It is just as important. Yes. Imagine the data loss, the monetary yes. Right. Yes. Very good. Yes. Very good. Yes. reputation as well. Yes. 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 Trust. So there's many things that plays a part into this. So yes. it's very important. Very important. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today in our first session. And remember, keep your network secure, keep it clean, and thank you very much. Thank you.